have four or five children and the best you've had is one child? And the doctor says you cannot have children again. How do you handle that? Because once a while, it will get at you. Yes? Yeah. It will get at you. Once a while. Oh God. Why me? Or how do you handle it? When you plan to have two children and now you have four more than you plan, more than your budget. Why? Because your wife says, I love children. And then she will take it at your wife. You see the problem, of course. We have to use coffee now instead of two. We pay for four. God is in control. Who knows what I'm talking about? <laughs> so they have to pay. And then you say, well, if, if only I had two children, this is the squad I've taken them to. But now I have four. You see? Do you understand what I'm talking about? And children that should give you joy and blessing strains your love strains your relationship then you look at them oh if you are from the country I came from there is a tribe in my country that you must have male child to show that you are establishing the marriage and now God who wants to honor you give you four ladies as children four babies all females and the guy says, I want to go and try outside. <laughs> for what? <laughs> You're looking for a male. Sit down here. There's nowhere to go. I'm just picking the issues of our life that tax our love. Is that okay? You think that love for your wife disappeared? No, it didn't disappear. It is pressure that press it down. It is pressure that changes the language in your home. You know the truth? Love doesn't die. Song of Solomon chapter 8 verse 5. You cannot kill love. But love can be pressured. Is that okay? Love can be what? Pressured. Love can, issues can happen that makes love looks like there's no more love in this marriage. Somebody read that for me if you find it. Song of Solomon. Nobody find it. Chapter 8, verse 5. Yes. Who is this that cometh up from the wilderness, leaning upon her beloved? I read thee up under the apple tree. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm looking for. Ek, Song of Solomon 8, 8, 8 verse 1. Let me get you the verse if we can get it there. Seven. Verse 1? Verse 7. Okay, read verse 7 for me. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can the flood drown it. Yes. If a man will give all the substance of his house for love, it will utterly be content. Nothing kills love. I used to love my wife before. No, that love didn't die. It is pressure that looked like that love had been suspended. Have you seen a pressured family? And suddenly, maybe it's a financial pressure, and it's been on, they've been managing, they've been managing, and suddenly there's a financial breakthrough. Huge money, new contracts. New opportunity, and you just find that the face of the woman and the man just brightens, they embrace themselves. Thank God, thank God, thank God. Do you know that emotion has been there all along? It was just that the pressure, that financial pressure, was choking it. If for any reason your spouse is sitting beside you, tell your spouse. Many waters cannot kill our love. I will love you all my life. No matter what pressure we go through, I will love you all. I'm watching you. 
Are you talking to her? Tell her. Anybody hearing me? These are spiritual people. <laughs> what we are talking about is Kana, so it doesn't concern them. <laughs> Praise God. So, what must you do? Change it to verse 7, please. Psalm of Solomon 8 7. What must you do? Number one. I'm closing gradually now. Number one, things you must do to bring healing to your relationship. Number one, identify all distractions and take a collective position on them. Identify all distractions and take a joint or a collective decision on them. Song of Solomon chapter 1 verse 6. Song of Solomon chapter 1 verse 6. Anybody read it for me? Yes. Yeah. Song of Solomon chapter 1 verse, verse 6. 6. Look not upon me because I am black. Yes. Because the sun hath looked upon me. My mother's children were angry with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyard, but my own vineyard have I not kept. Very good. Your mother's children can be a distraction to your love life. Your relations, your extended family, with unending demand on the immediate family that you are running, can strain your relationship. Did you hear me? The children, the family of your wife, her father, her mother, her siblings, if they see that this guy works in the mining company, is it mine they call it? Mines, and is making so much money, and then, so your sister comes to ask, your brother comes to ask, your mother comes to ask, everybody is putting pressure on the same money. It can mess up your marriage. It can mess up your marriage. And it can become a huge distraction. Am I saying don't take care of your extended family? No. Everything must be done moderately. How should it be done? Moderately. How should it be done? Moderately. Not to the point that the financial load makes you like the only driver of the entire family. I know a family like that. If they want, if they sneeze, they will call this guy. He works in the oil company. If they do this, they will call this guy. Then one day, the wife fought back. Leave my husband alone. Is it the only child you have? And the husband gets offended. Am I not their child? Didn't they train me before you met me? If they didn't pay my school, will I become who I am? Leave me with my people. So the two of them came to see me. And I said, if you were dead, would your family survive? Mm -hmm. Anybody thinking here? Mm -hmm. They are shouting about it because you are alive. If you die, and because you have money. If you die, do you have other people who are still alive who doesn't have money? You don't knock that door. Those guys are living well without any distraction. Am I making sense to anybody? So when I said that to the guy, it was like something fell off his eyes. I told him, I said, I'm telling you, if you die, or you get a job in Australia where nobody can reach you, by the time they are sleeping is when you are in the office, by the time you are sleeping is when they are sleeping, and they can't reach you. And I said, I guarantee they will solve their problems. So it's the lie of the enemy. To say, hey, they are my people, and therefore my immediate family is strained, is stressed, is challenged, because I just feel I must do something for the extended family. <laughs> Am I helping anybody with this? I 
Am I saying don't give things to your extended family? Is that what I have said? No place. No place. As a young couple, some few years ago, we didn't have much money. How much is 200 naira in rands? I was given, I was given my father-in-law, who is a professor, I was giving him eight rands equivalent every month. That's what I can afford. I was giving my own mother eight rand, my father eight rand, my mother-in-law eight rand. Everybody gets eight rand. Every month. It can't solve their problem. But from my heart to say, we bless our roots. We bless our parents. But you know why all we had was that 200 naira? Because when I get any money, I take care of my immediate family first. It is what is left that we push. Is that okay? And what is left is only best at 88 rams for four people. That's total how many? 32 rams. Before God, I have done well. Before men is a shameful money. It's okay. Is that okay? Yeah. See, the issue first is not about impressing people. Because today we run into financial embarrassment because we want to give an impression to our people, yeah. to our friends that we have the money. Yeah. But you are alone. Yeah. You're still paying on your car. Yeah. You're still paying on your house. You're still paying so many things. Come on, be smart and don't strain your home. Yeah. It's more painful when you pretend to be who you are not. Be a pragmatic person. Be a real person. So from eight rounds, it grew. We started giving them 500 naira every month. How much rounds is that? Is that an improvement? From eight to 20 rounds every month. Hmm? It's embarrassing. I wasn't embarrassed. Because I need to take care of my immediate family force. Is what is left that will be shared. Then it grew from there to 5,000 naira. How much is that? 200 rands for four. Is that okay? That's. Um, and it grew. It became 10,000 naira per month. How much is that in rands? So, even in rands, what in Jojua, baby? Do you get what I'm saying? And from there, it became 20,000 naira every month to each of them. So, how much is that in rounds? So, it's getting to 1,000 rounds. From 8 rounds, as my finances increase, they also enjoy the benefit of the increase, but after I have sought out my immediate family. Do that make sense to you? And it grew to a point that we stop giving them money. We start doing projects in the house for them, like sinking borehole, like changing all their furniture, like doing one thing or the other. Did you get what I'm saying? Till my parents began to die one by one. <laughs> so that's why I told somebody, I said, in the grave, my father cannot say, I didn't take care of him. If he says that, even the ground will say, ha, ah, ha. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> what more do you want? Do you understand what I'm saying here? But do you know where we started from? Eight rounds. Don't live an exaggerated life. You would mess up yourself. Don't give your family, your extended family, an impression that you are their Messiah. 
Jesus is our Messiah. Yeah. Not you. Yeah. <laughs> so don't play that role. Play a role of a grateful child mm -hmm. to your parents. What would you say you should play? A grateful child. Play a role of a grateful child. And give them assurance. As the Lord bless us more, you will be blessed. Mm -hmm. So be praying for us. But so far, this is where we are. Is that a good solution I'm offering you? Yes, sir. Huh? That's how to heal your family. Your immediate family. Because for some of you, it is what your father says that becomes law in your home. That you are still a boy husband. You are not a mature person yet. So why did we lead a boy to the altar to marry a woman? Because you can't take a decision. You don't know what you want to do. It's what your people say. So I don't like the way your wife is behaving. Don't worry, mom. I will call her to order. Wife, mom, don't like the way you're behaving. Stop that nonsense. They came back to me. That's why you could marry me. You're a boy husband. Amen. You're not a man. Man knows how to take decisions. Men knows how to defend their homes. Men knows how to protect their wives. Nobody should be courageous enough to strip your wife of honor. Yeah. No matter who is the person. Anybody hear me? <coughs> My scribe have stopped writing. She's carried away with her with her teacher. It's a for lonely. Uh, are you getting what I'm saying to you? So, if you want to enjoy your relationship, number two thing you must do, apart from dealing with distractions, that's what I talked about. And distraction can also come from your wife who wants to do a hair style. How much is this hair style? <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to do a hairstyle? I like that some, some hairstyle ladies do now that cost as much as a hundred thousand naira in Nigeria. Right. Huh? More than that. More than that. Okay. Are you serious? Yes, sir. Like how much? Huh? Are you serious? Yes, sir. Just to wear on the head? Yes, sir. Why? A style. How much is doing 250,000 naira rands? That's like 10,000 rands. 10,000 rands to put an air on your head? <laughs> what? That is somebody's monthly salary. <laughs> Did you hear what that guy said? He said, yeah, the salary. want to impress? Where are you wearing that air to? Will it change your salary? When you wear that air tied to your office, will it change your salary? It's a wasteful spender. If you will be great in life, your greatest asset will be a simple lifestyle. Stop living complicated life. When I didn't have a car and I thought I needed a car by all means, I prayed a very strange prayer. Can I tell you the prayer? Oh God, give me a car. Even if it doesn't have any door, I will be climbing on top. I will climb on top to enter inside. I need a car, God. <laughs> and I'm sure God will laugh in heaven. Say, look at this guy. You want a car without door? Because for that would be more cheaper than to get the one with a door. <laughs> so I said, God, give me a car. Even if it doesn't have a door, I will be climbing. I will just get some stood climb and enter inside and drive and go and preach for you. <laughs> and God saw it. And he gave me a car where it has four doors. <laughs> so I don't have to climb <laughs> to enter it. Avoid destructive spending. 
don't fly business class when you don't have the capacity. <laughs> they got the same flight will arrive at the same time. <laughs> Both the guy in the economy, the guy in first class, you will all land at the same time. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? Is it that business class is wrong? No. Life is growth. Most times I travel to preach now, they send me business class. It wasn't so before. Before, not just economy, if you can put me in the boot, it will be okay. Just fly me there and let me serve God. Do you understand? But one day we traveled, we flew into Italy. As usual, my wife has a way of teasing me. Is that okay? Come. She has a way of teasing me. So every time we're entering the aircraft, she's usually in my front, holding our seat card, and then going in my front. Then she will say to me, favor. She said, come on, you're to go to business class. I said, come on, you're going to these are people sitting in business class. Let's also sit here. Why are you carrying me to economy? I said, stop it. And then we will laugh and laugh. This day we go to Italy and we we boarded. Okay, we landed. We came on the economy. We finish our meeting and then we're going to Paris to start another meeting. So we're going to catch a flight and we're going to the economy as usual. And the boy said, "Do I sit here?" I said, "Sit there." <laughs> but me, I'm going to my seat number. When they come to challenge you, tell them your husband is in the economy class. They will come and meet me there. I will tell them you've been training business class. <laughs> then we finish the meeting in Paris. We're leaving Paris for London. The brethren in London had changed our ticket to first class. Wow. We didn't know. So as usual, we had our body card and we didn't check the number. You know, we are used to going to somewhere. Where is that? <laughs> so we're going to economic class. And then the air, the air was still looked at the car and said, no, 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 madam, no, madam, this is number two. And please follow me. Oh, I have looked back. I said, I told you God was hearing you. <laughs> when you were harassing me, I told you God was hearing you. I didn't tell these guys anything. See what they bought now. I said, ah, this place is good. I said, yes, but life is growth. We have not come to that level yet. When we get to that level, it will be clear to all we are there. Do you understand? Don't put pressure. Don't put pressure. I was to come to South Africa. These guys couldn't buy me a business class. All of them see them. <laughs> <laughs> Life is growth. I agree. But please avoid buying what you don't have capacity for. Did you hear me? I can't comprehend at times you see a young lady not married using a telephone of a hundred thousand naira. That's how much it runs. It's cheap. This man knows values of something. Like how much? Rams? Now, what do you need a telephone number? Now you stand up. You are doing a test now. What do you need a telephone of uh, 50,000 rands. Does that make sense? Or there are more phones more expensive than 50,000? Are there phones more than 50,000 rands? 18, 20,000 rands. The most expensive is 20,000 rands. Is that the type you're using? How much? Huh? 25 to 30,000 rands. One phone. 
How many folk would they give you for 30,000 rand? Just one. <laughs> what will the phone be used for? If I give you a telephone of 30,000 rounds, take, what will you use it for?